I would, I would close with the analogy that I've become very fond of using lately, which is um, under, to the, the, the simplest way that I have to explain to people how to understand people like me is to say, well, what if we were to compare animals to plants? What if we were to say uh, that fauna were flora? What kind of flora would people be at being at the top of the animal kingdom? People would be trees. They're the largest plants in the plant kingdom, at least except for giant underground mushroom spores, but I'm not going to go there. <laughs> Most people are trees, okay? They start out as saplings, but they eventually grow, for the not very long, they grow uh, up enough to hold themselves up. They grow big, they branch out, they bear leaves, they bear flowers, they bear fruit. Uh, if people are trees, aspies, in my analogy, are vines. They are capable of growing up, of branching out, of bearing leaves and flowers and fruit, but they don't hold themselves up. They have to grow on something. In some cases, the vine will find another tree. In some cases, a vine can grow to choke trees. In other cases, they'll find a wall or they'll find a rock. If they're lucky, and only if they're lucky, and there's some, some, some intent there by somebody else, the vine will be given a trellis to grow on. And when you really, if you really want to cultivate a vine, you'll build it a trellis that it can really flower to its full glory. And vines can be just as beautiful as trees and can bear just as much fruit and do amazing things and be workhorses. But you would never look at a vine and expect it to hold itself up. You would never think, why can't this vine be a tree? Uh, and that trellis, that structure, that coaching, that that, I mean, I know, uh, not long after my Aspie diagnosis, I met a family whose kids were in my chess club. The older uh, child was 12 or 13 at the time. They had intentionally moved from the East Coast to Bloomington for this son of theirs who was Aspie. He was a brilliant musical composer, uh, even at 13, because he had trouble negotiating bigger environments and they felt that Bloomington was the right place for him, but they essentially saw part of Bloomington as a trellis. It was a place that they knew that even if they were gone, he could build up enough roots in and be familiar enough with that they wouldn't worry about his ability to get along in the world. And towns of this size can be a great boon in a way that larger cities can't be. Uh, and I recognize it in myself now. I know that I've stayed here because it's quite an amiable trellis for my needs. I still chafe at it sometimes. I get frustrated by some things, but I know how deeply rooted I am here. And, uh, you know, what I would urge you to do is to recognize, regardless of how you build it, recognize that uh, the person in your charge, or the, if you are that person, is in need of structure and coaching. That, is in, that vine is in need of a trellis. And you cannot, I mean, the, the same analogy applies. You don't just move that vine from that trellis right away. A trellis may be a geographic one, it may be a social and personal one, but I know that when I left home at, in, in high school, my grades were good, and I went to college, my grades plummeted uh, perilously. There was no such thing as a CIP. I couldn't even imagine such a thing. Didn't know that it was anything but my own personal problem. I recognize now that had I stayed home or had I been put in a more structured environment where I could grab onto the walls and really blossom, if, more, if people knew that I had a problem, they would explain some things to me that weren't self-evident to me, things that we might call the hidden curriculum, that I would have flourished much quicker than I did. I managed, I got somewhere, but it took too long. I wasted a lot of opportunities not knowing that I needed a trellis or that I needed cultivating. Um, but we, we don't, most of the time we think of ourselves, like in America especially, when you reach adulthood, you're expected to you know, be a tree, be on your own. You don't live in your parents' basement. Fortunately, that idea is sort of going away as you realize through poverty sometimes uh, that, that people need to live with each other, generations to live with each other. But, uh, you know, it's, it's especially true for people on the spectrum. They need that structure in a, as badly as a vine needs a trellis. And 
If, if, you, if you take nothing else from me, if that helps you, I've done my job. And if you have any questions about it, I'm happy to expound it some more. But thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks, Steve.